It is possible, even though it's rare, that painted and acrylic coated steel can have defects straight from the supplier. So in this video, we'll talk about what defects are possible and how to identify those. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. Welcome to Q&A Mondays, I'm Thad Barnett. Subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Today we are talking about defects that can happen with painted or acrylic coated steel metal roofing materials. What can happen from the steel mill and on and what happens during the process to make sure those defects are minimized or removed completely before it actually gets to a roll former, before it gets to a metal roofer, before it gets to a home. So I have Jeff Hawk and Adam Mazella from Sheffield Metals with me today. Thanks for being here guys. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the process that steel takes to get from a steel mill into someone's house. And then we'll kind of talk about the defects and, and what that looks like along the way. So Thad, typically, you know, when you hear the word flat rolled uh, product, that's typical of the steel that we're sourcing. Um, the, the steel that we're getting is usually a cold rolled substrate, and then it goes through a coating process and it's coated with galvalume. So we're usually AZ50 coating, and that's just the, the top and bottom combined thickness of coating on the steel um, for painted product. And then the unpainted product is an AZ55. So they go a little bit thicker on the unpainted just because it's gonna be exposed. From there, the steel goes to the paint lines if it's intended to be painted, or if it's a Galvalum product, it would go to one of our branches. All of the steel we receive is typically pre-tension leveled. So it's, it's getting a lot of the quote unquote shape out of the product prior to even coming to us. And from there, there is some, some uh, quality inspections and processes that they go through before oftentimes we even see it. So if there's uh, shape issues or gaps in the coating or pinholes or even damage to to substrate, you know, the idea is that they're going to catch it before it even really uh, gets paint on it or before it's processed by us and ultimately out the door to even see one of our customers. Tell me more about that tension leveling and tell me about the memory of metal. So all metal has a memory, um, you know, and it, it's, you know, as, as steel is made, it's made in a process that it's subjected to very high heat and when it cools, that's essentially where it cools and you can see a grain in the metal. And then as it's either rolled further or rolled into coil form, you know, that coil wants to conform to that metal memory. So that's typical of what you see in like coil set or if it wasn't totally flat, um, you know, you could have things beyond coil set such as edge wave, you can have uh, center buckle, those are really the typical things that we're seeing in our world is that that coil set, edge wave, center buckle. You know, there are other issues kind of alluded to like crossbow and torsion, uh, not terribly typical. You know, you can see these things, but usually the tension leveling process will eliminate most of these shape issues. Um, and all, all the tension leveling, I don't want to say all it is, but tension leveling essentially is subjecting the steel to, you know, immense pressure to essentially take this shape and straighten it or flatten it. And if you were to, you know, take a piece of steel um, before it's tension leveled and cut it out and then take a piece of that steel, you know, 10 feet later and cut that out after it was tension leveled, uh, most often you'd see that there is less shape in the items that were tension leveled. As you said, a lot of the defects that you might see in our world is that shape issue. Yeah. So, and, and that shape issue can cause things, it cause issues downstream when slitting, you know, for us or even further downstream when our customers are going to fabricate, you know, a trim piece. So let's say they put a sheet in a shear and they want to, get a nice long 10 foot piece and, and shear it, you know, that could have shape issues and cause them issues and uh, ultimately not end up with the best looking finished product. So uh, similarly with rolling panels, you know, that shape, that memory in that metal, if it's not taken out or if it's not able to be taken out, 
and you're putting that, you're subjecting it to additional pressures, forming a piece of trim, forming a panel, it's still going to want to try to keep that shape. So it might show up in the form of oil canning. It might show up in the form of the panel trying to twist as it's being roll formed. Uh, and it, it could run uphill, downhill, left, right. Um, oftentimes, your machine can uh, help accommodate some of these shape issues. But ideally, you know, a good check is to check the shape of the metal prior to it going into the roll former, if you are noticing some shape issues. And I, and I know Jeff has a lot of experience on kind of how to adjust and adapt to shape issues in metal prior to being roll formed. So Adam, as you said, you know, even after the metal is produced, uh, somebody with a portable roll former does have some control over the finished panels of what they look like. Uh, one of the main things that there is is there's what's called a camber adjustment where if the panel is running uphill or downhill, more of like a ski slope. They have the ability within their machine to adjust the roller set and basically flatten a panel out that might be sloping in one of those directions. It might be caused because of a, a machine being that needs to be adjusted or it could be caused like you were talking about having uh, inconsistencies in the material itself. Uh, there are things you can do to check it, whether it's your machine or whether it's the material uh, before the uh, materials run through it but um that is one of you know another good benefit about portable roll formers and the flexibility they have you uh, give you when it comes to manufacturing your own panels jeff can you clarify a little bit more about you know once the steel comes from a steel mill goes into a coating line to be painted and then comes into a sheffield metals facility tell me a little bit more about the process that sheffield goes through when they receive that material and then gets it out to their customers we receive master coils from the steel mill or the steel mill provides the paint line with the master coils and then we receive the painted master coils from the paint line once we receive them uh, we have stock coils stock standard sizes that we uh have on and it's usually 20 or 24 inches uh so we slip those down from either a 48 inch master coil or a 40 inch master coil to get the stock 20 24 inch sizes we could also slip down to custom sizes again that's going to be based on the panel profile that you're running and the panel finish panel width that you want it's going to be based on the stretch out so we'll actually take those master coils and we'll slip them down to the proper size to be able to get them to the manufacturer to be able to run the panel that they're uh, trying to produce whether it be a 12 inch wide panel coming out of a 16 inch wide coil or a 16 inch wide panel coming out of a 22 inch wide coil but uh standard coil widths are always going to be your best option as far as um, being more economical because you're reducing waste and those are going to be your 20 and 24 inch coils. Adam, when Sheffield receives material to cut those master coils down that are thousands and thousands of pounds into smaller coils for uh, roll formers and fabricators and contractors, um, does Sheffield have um, some quality uh, control procedures to make sure the material is, is good and free of defects before it gets slit down and then sent to a customer? Yeah, and, and that ultimately you have kind of your pre-inspection, something that comes off the truck. We're visually inspecting it, looking for damage to the packaging. A lot of things come in in a package, and so we leave the packaging on typically to protect it when it's in inventory. However, there is a visual QC process, and you might see dents and damage, and, and ultimately uh, you want to work through all of that those potential issues to make sure it's not going to end up uh, going to a customer. So that's pretty typical, you know, and then to understand and really be able to see shape issues or, or issues of defects in, inherent in the substrate, you really got to get the metal up on the, on the slitter to be able to see it. What I mean by that is, you know, we have our typical facility lighting, but over top all of our slitters, we have uh, really bright lights that we can see and, and, and see the light bouncing off of the metal as it's going through uh, either the slitter or the pit or, you know, being recoiled to look for shape issues. And we usually have two people on the slitter, uh, two or three at any given time, to really keep an eye on that and, and look for those things. Sometimes things slip through, um, you know, and, and I'd say it's on limited occasion, but oftentimes we, we stop. If we do see an issue, we try to cut samples out. We, we measure how big of an issue it really is. And when I talked about eye units previously, um, make sure that it's within uh, industry 
tolerance for I units and make a determination if the customer can use it or not. Sometimes it, it could be operations reaching out to sales and sales reaching out to the customer and trying to understand, hey, you know, there's a potential for an issue. It's within tolerance, but you know, are you planning on putting structure in this panel? You know, stiffening ribs, stiffening beads, striations. So typically we love seeing structure in the panel. So that could create some dialogue between sales and the customer as far as, you know, the intended place of this panel. What are they, what are they going to do? Are they going to put structure, stiffening beads, striations, things of that nature? Um, sometimes they might say, hey, it's a flat panel. I really need, need this to look like glass. And you know, we might have to choose a different coil or if it's out of tolerance, we might have to uh, push back on the steel mill and say, hey, you know, this this coil is out of tolerance and ultimately reject it on our end prior to even going to a customer. So. so towards the end of this process, when someone is running a coil through their roll former and they notice an issue, what should they do? Probably the most important thing you could do is if you notice an issue while you're running your roll former is to stop running your roll former. We usually recommend and say, you know, we'll give you 300 feet for the problem to work itself out. After that 300 feet, it's it's kind of hard to compensate for the problem and things like that if the whole coil has been run out or the whole job has been run out. So again, this goes into the importance of the roll forming operator to really pay attention to what's going on and, and QA the products that are coming out. If you think you have a problem during the roll forming process and you're noticing issues, and you're below that 300 feet, you could still call us um, and say, how should I proceed? I think there might be an issue with this coil. But the, the best thing a, an operator could do is, is to stop, let us know what's going on. So the, the main thing is that you do, you, you do stop. You don't have a whole bunch of panels laying on the ground or uh, you know stacked up that we can't accommodate. And we try to catch the problem as early as possible. On top of that, I mean, if there is an issue, you might be asked to replicate that issue. And if you run the entire coil out, it's going to be awfully difficult to replicate that issue, and in turn be you know have have somebody be able to uh, compensate or issue a credit if there truly is bad coil. You know, additionally, if you don't stop, you run the whole thing out. We don't know if it was a roll former issue. We don't know if it was a uh, coil issue in, in many cases. So just kind of second all of that. Just stop and and seek some guidance that's that's really what we're here for is to um you know work through challenges work through issues and and get things perfect uh for your install moving forward thanks guys for talking me through the defects that can occur in painted and acrylic coated steel for your metal roof remember comment down below if you have any questions subscribe here to the metal roofing channel and as always i'm thad barnett and we'll catch you next time